Yeah, there's some classic opening music for the first episode of the Diamond Dialogue. I don't know. There's no the. There's no. It's just Diamond Dialogue, I guess. So, I'm uh, I'm here with my first guest, the inaugural guy, Toby Pinder. How's it going, Toby? Hello. Yes, it's going pretty good. So, How's things uh, yourself? I'm I'm doing pretty good. It's it's a nice Friday. It happens to be the Fourth of July. I'm sure this will be watched after the fact, but uh, you know, I got to get off of work a little early, so we're gonna do a show here. Bit of independence never hurts. Right. <laughs> if you're ready, we'll we'll get right into it. So uh, we started off a little bit with the first question, but uh, who the hell are you and how did you get here? Well, when a mother and daddy love each other, no, um, I'm <laughs> basically some guy who uh, has listened to a lot of tech podcasts, as I'm sure we can all relate to, and uh, as... As soon as DTNS started, it just so happened as a matter of, um, I suppose, a certain matter of uh, timing and schedules and, and interest and things, it just so happened that I started to actually be able to catch everything live. So uh, from that side of things, that's who I am from the Diamond Club side of things. Uh, from the from the external world, I suppose. <laughs> the real world. I'm the, the a... real world. The, the, the real world, the, the scary one with the fireball in the sky and all that stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a um, web developer and I also make um, hobby games, uh, little uh, little um, web-based games on the side awesome. and do things like that. So that's right. what I do with my spare time. Very cool. Very cool. So, all right, here's, all right, we got the next question for you. You're stranded on a desert island with uh, this this magical VCR, DVD player, whatever, that that never run out of power. Runs on seawater. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure they're actually working on that. But <laughs> you get three movies. <laughs> what are they? And and they can be, you know, TV shows, but it's only what would fit on, like, a single DVD. You know, a single movie's worth or, you know, half a dozen episodes of a, of a right. show. So it's, it's, your, it's your standard file size thing. Right. right, right. So, 700 megabytes, that's all you get. No, wait, that's, that's CDs. <laughs> <laughs> so I have incredibly bad taste when it comes to movies because I'm more of a, I'm more of a video games guy, I'll admit. Um, so my picks would probably be Die Hard 1 because you can't beat a bit of Nagatomi Plaza. Right. Um, you know? The classics. Uh, I would probably uh, go for Inception because it, you know, it's the sort of thing where it's yeah, it was overhyped or whatever, right. but it's the sort of thing. You know, it's just it's a spectacle. It knows it's a spectacle. It's interesting, uh, and yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's it is what it is. And then probably after that, I'd go for um, oh, what is it? Um, Nicholas Cage's <laughs> um, oh, face off. Face off. Because it just gets incredibly uh, ridiculous. Like I say, terrible taste in movies. It's, you, know, <laughs> you could have gone with at least like then, yeah. 60 seconds if you're going with a Nick Cage movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's the thing, right? If you're going to be stuck on an island and you're going to be stuck with these things for ages, you don't want to pick the stuff that you like because you're going to end up hating it. So you want to pick the stuff that's interesting. That is that is what it is, and, <laughs> and you know there is that's that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So. <laughs> I'm sticking to it. All right, <laughs> all right. But here's here's a more fun question. Get a superpower. Somebody, you know, pick your pick your superpower. You know, you're bitten by a radioactive something, whatever. Um, what's your what what superpower do you get, and what's the first thing you do? So. For a very interesting question, I'm going to pick a very boring answer as far as I see it. Uh, I think my, you know, if you're going to have a superpower, the superpower could be to not to have extreme um, brain skills or whatever the word is. Smart. <laughs> Case in point. <laughs> yes, in in intelligence, that's the word. Intelligence. Yeah, that's that. <laughs> right, so so not to have like massive extreme intelligence, but to have the ability to grant it to others in an area of effect. So I like that idea. You'd use that as a superpower. You would then you would then be able to subtly alter um, the world governments 
and uh, and politics and process because you'd be able to move to the right area of the um, of of the world and then uh, basically affect policies and things. So yeah, that's that's incredibly interesting. That yes, no, that, suddenly that means... affecting democracy for the win. No, that's totally <laughs> an interesting one. Oh, and it looks like my my video has frozen. Oh, Let's see if I can oh, bring yeah. it back here. Uh, nope, doesn't look like I can. Oh dear. Excellent. Okay, <laughs> so we'll just oh. we'll continue on with my video not working for some strange reason. Um, <laughs> all right. So, your mouth is open. I'm sorry. <laughs> at least your mouth isn't open on the. Uh, the yeah, picture. yeah. At least I don't have some crazy look on my face. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, what? Uh, so you saw, you said you're more of a gamer. What's your current uh, current game of choice? Waste all your time. Um, on. Ooh, this is this is the toughie, isn't it? Uh, right. So current game of choice uh, in terms of raw hours, I would definitely say the game Warframe, uh, which is unconventional. It's it's very similar to your sort of Borderlandsy type thing where you've got, but instead of like grinding for loot and get better loot, you're sort of you're basically grinding for items and things to to make the the weapons yourself. Oh, uh, that's and cool. It's just a. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, I just said yeah. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's just a, a sort of it's it's a game with uh, the sort of meta game that encourages you to just play again and again and more and more. But it's also the, the the original game is actually quite fun as opposed to certain MMOs or whatever, where you just sort of click in hot bars. It's just sort of a, a satisfying thing to just sort of jump in and jump out of because, you know, who doesn't like shooting things in the face and space ninjas? <laughs> space ninjas. <laughs> so, yeah, you, that's, you had that's, me at space that's my game of choice. Nice. Well, you had uh, you'd mentioned earlier that you're a web developer, and, and I happen to know that you tend to use Ruby on Rails. So uh, what's, your, what's your favorite Rails gem? <laughs> so this is the this is the nerdy guest specific uh, inside baseball question, isn't it? Right, exactly, uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm probably a fan of uh, Rails at underscore admin uh, because basically it's a it's a gem you can uh, put into any Rails install, and uh, if you have the sort of act, active record models and everything set up for it, um, and all of the the sort of um, database level stuff, you can basically just plug that in and then with very little configuration you just get all of the um, creating forms, the, you know, the reads, the updates and the destroys. You can get absolutely sort of just a, an admin panel that will just allow you to just type in from, from wherever you are in the world and just modify data from your own website. Uh, but it will also handle sort of the, the interrelations between those models. So it's not like just sort of editing SQL or something like that. Yeah. That's, so yeah, I would, I would pick that. Yeah, that's an awesome gem. I, I happen to use it too when, when I do Rails stuff. And man, that's it's so helpful to be able to get in there and just dig around and, and change the things you need to change. And, and also to be able to, it's got this other back end that you can create, um, or not other, but you know, this added ability to the back end that you can create views and stuff for certain things. So you can actually have several people come in and be able to manage something so and in an in, in, in absolutely easy, yeah easy way. it's very powerful uh, if you take it to that level which i haven't yet so <laughs> yeah so it's pretty cool stuff um you had mentioned also that you uh you do a um uh the, some game programming um and i i know that you participated in the ludlam dare this year so uh, what, what was the the favorite or your best feedback that you got from that uh yeah my my favorite, obviously. I mean, I got some constructive criticisms among among the fact that it had no sound and, and things like that, and mm. and you know certain certain gameplay mechanics which I knew were flawed at the time, uh, and I had and people came up with some good ideas for them, but you know everyone likes to indulge in a bit of praise, and and there was there was one guy who got to like the deepest levels, and he played for half, you know, he played for a full half an hour. Um, and I mean, this is the Loom Dare where you, you have like 2,000 games to get through. So this guy was like, oh, I played for half an hour, it was great, you know, and, and I lost track of time and everything. <laughs> and so I would say, I mean, that, that's kind of what you set out to make games for, is to, to let people enjoy it. So, you know, I do enjoy the fact that um, I got a lot of feedback and I am working on uh, a sort of version that will address most of the, the 
the criticisms and the um, suggestions for improving it. Uh, but also, you know, who doesn't like to be told that the thing they make is something that they, somebody got enjoyment out of. So, <laughs> right. Yeah, that's what I'd say. No, that's cool. And it's, it's neat that you're taking this thing that you, you did in a kind of a blitz development and, uh, you, you know, going to continue working on it and, and maybe it's going to you know, become something moving forward, which is very cool. Maybe so, yeah. <laughs> So I, I know it's been that you're... more than forty-eight hours on it. Though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Now it's more than forty-eight hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I also know that uh, in the gaming theme, you happen to be an Ingress player. I know you're a dirty member of the it Enlightened. Is. Green mother. All right. Uh, anyway, <laughs> beyond that, <laughs> what's the uh, yep. what's the 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 best or your favorite portal that you've captured? There's, uh, there's some so cool ones out there. It's one that I encountered yesterday. Uh, for those who don't know, Ingress is a it's an augmented reality game that um, Google brought out, where you uh, wander around between different points of interest around the real world with your phone, and you capture them. Uh, and the one that actually made me laugh more than anything is there is a church, uh, and in the picture for the church, it has Google doesn't have all the answers. <laughs> as the sign and this sign takes up about 50 percent of the photo you got this church in the background so some google employee has had to approve that and i don't know some, there's a bit of uh, a bit of a resistance flair to it shall we say oh uh, nice that's too that's, funny <laughs> no that's that's a, that's know, a pretty good bring out the picture because it's a bit too close to home so <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> Well, awesome. That's uh, that's been your questions. Do you have anything to uh, to pimp out to anybody? Anything you're working on? Website? Anything like that? Um. Well, no. I mean, uh, at the moment, pretty much everything I do is through Twitter. Um, I also have tobapinder.com, but it's something that I'm not updating very often. It's got it's got my uh, Living Dare games on it. Uh, so if you fancy playing a few silly web games, um, you know and Anything else that I do will probably go up on there. So, uh, yeah, so just my name, Toby Binder, and Twitter, and tobybinder.com. Excellent. And uh, the, the DTNS chat room, anytime that the DTNS is on, because I'll usually be in there making land puns. <laughs> right. No, that's awesome. Well, I've got, actually, I lied before. You're not done with your questions. I've got one more question nope. for you. It's a parting question, and as a British member of the, the audience, you, sh you should know the answer to this one. What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? <laughs> is this an African or a European swallow? <laughs> you are correct. I, I, yes, I may have been prepared for this somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks, Toby Pin. Thanks for having uh, coming and join on me on the on the first episode of the Diamond Dialogue. I terrible little thing that my video froze, but we'll get that worked out for next time. So, anything I've else to add? I've always been a very calm person, so you know it's you know you you stood upright. You you're watching very still. Yes. You, you know, there's no problem there. I'm very I'm a very stoic ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, so we're gonna. High take the elevator back out. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time on Diamond, Di Di uh, Diamond Dialogue. I can't even say the name of the show yet. Have to be here. See you later.